Tense Nitsotem Dick, Terra Capon Sigasun, Sturgeon Lake Cree Nation, Machinia. I started doing beadwork when I was about 11 years old. This was about a year or so after my beloved grandmother, Elizabeth Flett, passed away. Before she passed, I had promised her I would learn to bead. So, still grieving and missing her deeply, I had sat myself down and started beading. To honor my promise to her, I had turned to my memories of watching my now late grandmother, Mary Capo. From time to time, I used to stand by her side, observing as she sat quietly beading. While part of me was fascinated by the beads and the work she was doing, mostly I would take those moments in between my playtime simply because I loved to be near her. I had no idea then that she was teaching me beading by example. But it would be from those silent lessons and the practice that followed that I would learn how to bead as I had promised my granny flat. What I quickly discovered in my practice was a profound joy. There, in the time and space where I was beating, I could feel my granny flat was with me. And in that time and space where I was beating, I could also hold my gran, Mary, close, though at that time we lived far apart. In my practice, as I carefully threaded beads and clumsily stitched them together, I connected to my grandmothers. Throughout the years that followed, as my practice grew and my skills strengthened, I would also develop a deep appreciation for how powerful are the gifts of our grandmothers. In my life, beading has been one of the most important ways I have come to understand Wakotuin, for in beading, I experience the enactment of Wakotuin. Beading for me is a conscious, embodied, ongoing connection with my grandmothers and an inextricable link to generations of Indigenous women through the women's work that has been and continues to be integral to the continuation of traditions, knowledge, and governance structures. Beading is a practice of honoring my granny Flett, a woman who was not related to me by blood, but became my grandmother through the enactment of Wakuhtuin, through understanding and practicing relatedness in an expansive way. So in the tradition of my grandmothers and to honor them, I offer you today here a gift, an idea of beating as a way to help us imagine new possibilities of being in good relations with and in our shared world. This is a perspective that is becoming more clearly into focus for me over the past few years as I have been exploring more closely the ways in which beading is a practice of a kohtuin. What I have come to see, feel, and experience is that when I bead, in addition to connecting with my grandmothers, I am also connecting to my other than human relatives, the migasak, the beads themselves. This has emerged from my understanding of a Cree ontology through which I recognize beads as other than human relatives and beading as how I have a relationship with those relatives. And just as my grand quietly taught me how to have this relationship, my often quiet and contemplative time with the beads has taught me important lessons. Through this practice, this relationship, I have learned how to embody qualities such as patience, respect, caring, that I believe are critical to enacting Nihal laws and governance. I believe the recognition of beadwork as a form of other than human kin in line with Nihio or Cree thought reminds us that we are all related to everything in creation and can help us practice respectful, caring relationships with all of our kin. Hi, hi. <laughs>